Let's preview tonight's Spurs Jazz game, then ask where expectations set too high for your San Antonio Spurs. You are locked on Spurs, your daily San Antonio Spurs podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, this is Hot Rod. And I'm RC from the Cybertron Spring. And you're listening to Locked On Spurs with Jeff Garcia. Welcome back to Locked On Spurs. We're here on the Locked On NBA Network. I'm your host, Jeff Garcia, Spurs writer for Ken's 5 San Antonio. Glad to have you all back. Hope everybody's having a great work week. And as always, we'll get you through this work week right here on Locked On Spurs. By the way, you can subscribe to Locked On Spurs wherever you get your favorite podcast from iTunes to, to Spotify to the Ken's 5 Plus app to YouTube. Um, the list goes on and on. And you guys are the everydayers. We appreciate you subscribing each and every day and tuning in. For all things silver and black. Hey, what are we talking about today? Well, we're going to be uh, quickly previewing tonight's Spurs Jazz game, then bringing our guest, my colleague at Kent's Five, Vinny Vincetta. We're going to be discussing uh, where expectations set way too high for the Spurs entering to this new season. Should maybe, you know, Spurs fans, myself, you, everybody, you know, should be a little forgiving. We'll cross that bridge in a few minutes and then hear what you all are talking about. Uh, from some Locked On Spurs fan comments left on the YouTube page. So that'll be coming up next. But first, whoo, Spurs Jazz tonight. Let's see how it's all going to go down. So, uh, yeah, the Spurs come into uh, tonight's game 16 and 56. The Jazz are 29 and 43. Let's rewind the clock. The Spurs are coming off a win. Yes, win over the Phoenix Suns, 104 to 102. Wimby uh, did not play because of a left ankle injury. But Devin Vassell scored 26 points. Kelly Johnson had 14. Sohan had 26 and 18 points. He did a really good job on Kevin Durant defensively. Trey Jones had two points and four assists. For those who are on uniform watch, the Spurs will be in their white assist association jerseys. And uh, as far as the injury report is concerned, Kelvin Johnson and Wemby are questionable for tonight. So we'll see how that plays out. So, as always, we like to look at the opposing team first, in this case, the Utah Jazz. So, good news, everybody. The Jazz are on a six-game losing skid. So, uh, this the definitely Utah is coming on a downturn. Spurs are kind of in an upturn, you know, beating the Suns, uh, you know, uh, the way they did. Hopefully, they'll carry that momentum over tonight in Utah. Handle business. Now, the Jazz have recorded 10 consecutive games with fewer assists than their opposition. So they're definitely not distributing the ball. They're not facilitating right now. Uh, Spurs can definitely use that to their advantage. And finally, uh, the Jazz, this is how bad they are. Uh, now they're on their, I think they're on a six-game losing streak. Uh, they've recorded 10 consecutive games with more turnovers than their opponents. So Spurs got to take advantage of that if that trend continues tonight in Salt Lake City. Take advantage of the second chance opportunities. You know, create more offense. Get that scoreboard up in their favor. So Jazz are definitely definitely fumbling the, the ball right now. And, uh, yeah, turn more turnovers in their opposite in 10 straight games. Well, for your silver and black, uh, you, you remember that, that trend the Spurs recently had of uh, making more threes in their opposition? I think it was up to, like, 10, 11 games. Well, that's on a downturn right now. Uh, the Spurs have recorded three consecutive games with fewer three-pointers made than the opposition. Spurs got to knock it down from the three line. This is the modern era of the NBA. Sometimes you live and die by that three shot, and more often than not, you likely die with it. So hopefully the Spurs will not do that and make their threes uh, tonight in Salt Lake. But look, look I'm not going to end it on a, on, a, on a sour note like that. Uh, keep your eye on the scoreboard. The Spurs are undefeated on the road when they're leading at halftime. So if the Spurs are up at half versus the Utah Jazz, that could be a very good thing. So keep your eye on that scoreboard. All right, so there you have it, a quick Spurs Jazz preview. Coming up next, we have uh, Vinny Vincetta, my colleague at Ken's Five. We're going to be discussing uh, pretty much, well, we're going to be looking back and, and asking, were expectations that are way too high for the Spurs team? I, I know hindsight's twenty twenty, but we'll look back. Uh, ask questions like, you know, with expectations and, of course, you know, for being, you know, understanding that this is a rebuild and whatnot. And then we're going to be discussing you guys, the Lockdown Spurs fans, and what are y'all talking about over at the YouTube page. That's next right here on Lockdown Spurs. 
Hey, but first I want to talk about eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. That's what brings home the winning trophy. It also keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED lights. I mean, what more do you need? Oh, they got it all over at eBay Motors. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay's guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. How about that? Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber and you're not burning cash. Well, with all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. So San Antonio, keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. Once again, that's ebaymotors.com. The eBay guaranteed fit is only available to U.S. customers. Hey, I want to talk about Muslinger's drive through Coffee. Go there right now, San Antonio, 2404,000 Oaks Drive. They have it all. They got a friendly staff. They got a wide menu. They got everything you need to get your day going, whether that's their signature drink, uh, that is the Mudslinger. If you need dairy alternatives, they got that. You need mini donuts, they got that. You need non-caffeinated drinks, well, they definitely got that. Try the OG OJ. I highly recommend that one. And they're open every day from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. But in addition, if you need to jumpstart your day, I recommend the Red Bull Infused Lightning Bolt Series. But, but. They got a new twist on it. They have a drink called the Lightning Bolts. And now what they're doing now is using Lotus Energy instead of Red Bull. Now, Lotus has similar caffeine to Red Bull, but with seven power plant extracts. It gives you more flexibility in creating new drinks. And look, they still got the Red Bull available. So yay, if you like the Red Bull infused Lightning Bolt series. But the default will, is now going to be Lotus. So make sure if you, you want the Red Bull, you ask it. They got you covered. So yeah. You got to try it. You definitely got to try it. The lightning bolt line includes the alien. We all know who that's about, right? Victor Wimbiana. Yeah, 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 exactly. And uh, it's now made with Lotus Energy. Natural caffeine and a powerful blend of seven plant extracts. A new and approved lightning bolt drink. It'll keep you powered up all day. So what more do you need? San Antonio, go there to Muslinger's drive Through Coffee, a proud local sponsor of Lockdown Spurs and a proud community member serving San Antonio, the best drinks in these parts. Located near 281 and 1604. Follow them on all social media platforms at Muslinger SATX, for example, on X, on Threads, Facebook. The list goes on and on. They're very fan interactive. They look, I uh, try recommending them a drink of your own like device, like if you could think of one. And if you pitch it to them, they may name it after you. It happened for me, might happen for you. Once again, Muslinger's drive through coffee, 2404,000 Oaks Drive, open every single day from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Hey, go there right now because life is too short for bland coffee. This is Emily Swallow, and you are listening to Locked On Spurs with Jeff Garcia. And we are back joined by Vinny Vincetta. He is my colleague at Ken's 5 San Antonio. He's part of the sports team. And in case you're wondering, no, that's actually the, you know, we had to get a bigger lens for uh, for Vinny because his shoulders are so huge. We found it. You know, we fit him in. He's so buff because he is the Vin Dogs, we like to call him. Make sure to follow him on X at V Vincetta. Hey, Vinny, welcome back. Hey, it's springtime. I'm working out. Got to get that summertime body going, you know? There you go. There you go. Um, and, you know, you, you got to, Vinny. I mean, you, but, you know, you don't just, just don't go too overboard. You know, you, you can't beat all the women off with a stick, you know, and they're chasing you and everything. Save, <laughs> some, save some for the fall. I get it. I get it. Save some for the fall. Exactly. Uh, once again, follow me on X at B Ben Seda. And what are he and I talking about right now? Well, we're going to be discussing were expectations set too high heading into this season? Should fans and everybody else be forgiving for this team? And then get into what y'all are talking about over at the Locked On Spurs YouTube page. But Vinny, uh, the season is quickly winding down. I it's just so many. I think it was like three or four more home games and three, something like that. It's pretty much over, and it cannot be over soon enough. It's been a very, very bad season. It's been trying on everybody from you to me to fan base, maybe even to some of the players. No, as a matter of fact, they, they know. No, they're saying it has been a very trying season. But now that we're winding down and now that we understand this team is not out of the woods, a.k.a. the rebuild, just because they got it Wimby, do, do we feel that maybe expectations were set way too high heading into this season? I know hindsight is 2020, but looking back and looking now where this team is, 
were expectations set way too high? I think you have to ask where were the expectations set and by who? Because once again, I go all the way back to whatever it was, mid-September, early October of last year for media day. And everybody, Jeff, that participated went up to the podium, Coach Pop, Wimby, Devin Vassell, Jeremy Sohan, who am I forgetting? They all talked about, yeah, we're, we're, we're developing still. We're, we're going to figure it out with Wimby. But this season, they all said it now. They said this season is about winning. So that's been my constant struggle all season or the thing that mm -hmm. has piqued my curiosity the most. What in the heck happened? Because, again, they told us it was about winning, and that hasn't happened at all. And mm -hmm. let me tell you what I see from fans. I see fans, like, just relieved when they win a game because it's like, mm -hmm. finally, thank you, go Spurs, go. And I see other fans saying, no, we're hurting our draft position. Yep. So I think even the fans are all over the place. Mm -hmm. But to go back to your original question, were expectations set too high? Don't know. I mean, maybe maybe nobody thought about how brutal the West mm -hmm. was going to be again and how brutal it's going to be for the next handful of years. But I, I guess I got the impression mm -hmm. that they felt like they were going to win more and compete yeah. more. Yeah. But it, it hasn't happened. And we've seen this like they haven't lost games down to the wire the majority of the season. Mm -hmm. They've been run out of buildings many times yep. this season. So I, I guess it didn't meet their expectation at all because I felt like theirs was to go someplace. And I guess from our reporting and media standpoint and even the fans, it, it didn't meet anybody's expectations, I guess mm -hmm. I would say. No, no. I, look, we can rewind the clock back to the beginning of the season when you, me, uh, you know, the whole, the, most of the sports team, or there at Ken's, went on video. We all said, Vegas, you guys are out of your mind. 22 wins. You know, I had them high as uh, close to 30, a little over 30. I, I don't, I forget where you had them at. Well, I had them but, at 33. I had them at 33. Yeah. I said, yeah. I said, give me the over all day long on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, you know, Vegas saw it coming. You know, we didn't see it coming, but they definitely saw it coming a, a very bad season. As a matter of fact, I look I look back uh to the beginning of the season and some of the early Vegas projections. They had the Spurs, they nailed it at the bottom of the barrel of the, of the West. And even then I was scoffing, like, there's no way you add Wimby with a season team from last year heading to this year. That can't be. And here we are. So were expectations set too high? Yeah, I think I think they were based on what the team was talking about on media day. And then you, you know, you got, you know, let's face it, Vinny, we got sucked into the the Wimby mania. And, you know, we got into that. Oh, he's, you know, he's pushing us over the edge. We we got the generational player, and he has been that, but the team around him hasn't been that great. You so know, don't forget in that okay, first don't forget in that first third quarter of the season, like it was a real story. Pop kept saying it. The other four did not realize get the ball to the seven, three guy. Yeah. Like th th that did not happen on a regular basis, night in and night out. Once they figured that out, they've won a few more, but it's mm -hmm. been that one out of five, one out of yeah. seven, whatever it's been. But that's why the season got off to such a rough start. They couldn't figure out how to coexist and operate. And I, I think a lot of those guys didn't realize you can forget that he's a rookie. Just get the seven three guy the basketball. I mean, Sean Elliott, mm -hmm. bless his heart, has has screamed on countless broadcasts. Get the tall guy the basketball. So mm -hmm. that was a real problem early on. I don't think any of us realized that them figuring that out was going to take such a long time, or as, or as long as it did. Yeah, I, I'm right there with you. It took a while, and I think fans, myself, you, I don't know, I'm going to go speak for you, but we got blindsided by Wimby Fever. We got blindsided by that instead of just realizing, like, look, this is still a very young team. This is not – I mean, most of these guys should probably be playing in March Madness right now. You know, we really think about it. They should be there, not at the pro level. Pop kind of started hitting on that throughout the season, saying these guys are not fundamentally sound yet. He's used the words like immature, at least on the court, that is, uh, on this team, not as physical, a.k.a. soft. You know, we, we've seen those words being thrown out throughout the season, but it definitely was jarring. It was just jarring to see, you know, what this team has 
well, at least for this season to become now the, the, the real light is, you know, when B will be going to second season, the draft picks, the cash that they got on hand and yes, flippable players to move. So the future is still bright, but now comes the question, Vinny, should, should we, me, you, the fans, everybody that are fans, Spurs fans be forgiving. Should we just forgive this team and say, you know what? Yeah. You guys are still in the rebuild and we're going to go into next season, kind of keeping expectations lower than that we did this year. I think absolutely. I think absolutely. Yeah. If you believe as a fan, anybody, that the payoff is still down the road, yes, you better be forgiving and yeah. not be angry or upset because they have capital to work with. They have a summer free agent money to work with. They have the generational guy mm -hmm. that we've been hearing about since, oh, by the way, since 2022. You talk about we all got blindsided by Wimby hype. Don't forget that's been happening for more than a year now, maybe That's like true. more like 18, yeah. 18 months. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I, I think so. I mean, as, as, as fans and as a media group who wants to be excited and cover a winner, I think you have to forgive this year again, under the idea that there are some mm -hmm. stellar seasons on the way. I mean, wouldn't you agree that, mm -hmm. that if, if things do fall into place, that we're going to be happy and healthy for a lot of years down the road? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I think short term it sucks, but I think <laughs> long term it, it'll pay off. I think that's basically how it's it's shaping up right now. And I, I know there's you know you talk about the fan base is being divided. And, you know, one hand, you know, no lose because you're hurting your your draft picks, your draft lottery odds, and no win, win, win. The another one now is do the Spurs floor it on the rebuild this off season or still build through the draft? How many times have we heard this uh, throughout Popovich's time, just during the uh, Big Three era? We are built. We're not bought. Well, Vinny, do you think it's time maybe they start to flip that and say, you know what, it's time to just go ahead and buy this team, buy a winner right now, and let the wins come in? So I think you should go after people, yes, because yeah. there have been these little nuggets here and there, I think floated, Jeff, by the national media, but they have fueled that whole – you know, how much is Wimby going to put up with? How yeah. patient will Wimby be? Now, even if that's all just national media, just uh, stuff that's being thrown out there and tossed out there by them, um, everybody hears it, including mm -hmm. the Spurs. And so you have you have cash on hand to work with. So they yeah, do. call it call it call it trying to buy, but it, it's free agency. And if you can add some pieces Add some pieces, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, go after if there Do are it. people. Mm -hmm. And I've looked at the I've looked at the summer free agents, as I'm sure you have. There's some there's some people out there. It's mm -hmm. a better free agent list this yeah. year than it was last summer. So, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, a, a handful of years ago, the big summer fish was Lamarcus Aldridge. He wound up in San Antonio. So exactly. while they, while they don't have a yearly history of this. I think they need to go out, in my opinion, and, and I think Brian Wright should be willing to do some business this summer. Yeah, I and, and look, this look, even if the Spurs don't have to swing, I mean, I would love for them to swing for the fences of bringing a power name player, you know, multi all star guy. But even if they don't, there's still viable veteran young players in the league that are going to be free agents this offseason. I'll give you a name, Tobias Harris. I think that type of presence on the court would be great for the Spurs. He's not a flashy name, you know, a sexy name out there, but he is a proven veteran who can, who's been on winning teams with Philadelphia you know, who could slide in into the uh, Spurs system and work well with Wimby and the rebound and whoever they keep moving forward. So, again, the Spurs can maybe not floor it, but they can definitely start going past 55 miles and going maybe 65, you know, <laughs> in the rebuild lane uh, to uh, back to the top of the mountain. But I, I we circle back to the topic, you know, where our expectations set too high. Yeah, I think everybody came in, you know, just with the pie in the sky. I mean, we, we heard you know, some fans saying, you know, playoffs. You know, I think you and me were saying at minimum play in, uh, mm -hmm. you know, playing for the play in spot. Mm -hmm. But I got to ask you, Vinny, do you think, should we really tell fans, you, myself, just get bracing for maybe another lean year next year? Wow, man. What a, that is a, that's a really good one, isn't it? That's a really, yeah. That's an interesting thought to query. I, boy, um, that is really interesting, Jeff. I mean, hmm. I'm yeah, going to say yeah. I, I I'm going to say yes. 
I've, I've sat around and thought about that. I mean, yeah. would, would it really be another lean year next year? Like, let, let's define lean. Okay. Are, are they, okay. they going to finish in the top three in the West next year? We doubt it. No. No. Are they going to finish in the top five? We doubt it. So maybe lean could be getting into the play in next year. Mm -hmm. Maybe that would be the next yeah. logical successful yeah. step. I've seen people say, well, golly, you know, Wimby's going to win rookie of the year, but why is Chet and OKC um, so much better? You know, why are they mm -hmm. going to maybe have be a team that's going to make a deep run into May and June? Well, they're just, they have the right mix right now. Mm -hmm. They they drafted really well. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, that Sam Presti was built the Spurs way. So maybe you can rest easy in knowing that if that franchise got there, also being small market, the Spurs are going to get there too. And it's going to take some time. Like, like I, I, I keep hearing other Spurs on the, on the three-year plan. Is it, is it the three to mm -hmm. five year plan? I I've been saying, I've been saying for the record, they're on the three to five year plan. And I would, mm -hmm. I would venture to guess that you are too. Yeah, yeah, I'm right there with you. Yeah, I'm in that three to five year plan. I'm bracing myself for another <laughs> lean season. Now, do I think they'll win? Well, right now they're at 16 wins. You know, hopefully they'll rise above that you know, at the end of the season. But I got them going into maybe, ooh, I mean, for this team, you know, for this team and the standard that set the bar set very low, you know, if they can push close to 30, I'd be happy with that. I mean, that is a, to me, that's a big jump from this year to next. And look, it's been, but it has been a lot of playoff. It's been, the Spurs are in a playoff drought. Like you, yeah. you gotta, you gotta win with, with star power. You know, the Spurs had it for nearly two decades with Tim, Tony, Manu, and a little bit of Kawhi. And the bridge didn't really work. It worked maybe a while with Lamarcus and Demar, but then what? Well, it's been like five, six years since they have not been yet to the uh, at least the playoffs. Yeah, they've really. been to the play in, but they haven't been to the playoffs. So. But you know what is just a little frustrating for me, uh, Vinny, is that I know they can perhaps accelerate it because of the war chest that they're sitting on. Yeah. And I think that I think that's what's gonna irk a fan base, the fan base this offseason, if they don't dip into that to perhaps accelerate it. Now I know fans are saying, you know, you know, you don't want to force things, you don't want to force things, but my my counter to that is, but you said and you said it too, Vinny, the West is loaded. And some of these teams, I'm afraid, are made lap the Spurs in uh, in their rebuilds. That 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 conference is going to be around. It's not going away. Yeah, and, and that may be that may be the reason more than any other, Jeff, to accelerate the process. But what 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 league, high school, college, or pro is not a win now mentality? You're in sports yeah. to win. So mm -hmm. I would expect Brian Wright to open the war chest, as you term it. Mm -hmm in there and do something. I mean, I'm going to be shocked if they lay low. Just, just, I know it's not, yeah. been, I know it's not been their way, but you have a guy that wants to maximize and he tells you time and again, yes, that he, he, does. Wants to be, he wants to be the best ever. Well, how does that happen? You get the right people around Victor Wendell. Yeah. So yeah, you look at the onus oh, is, on, is on Brian Wright to pull some right. things out here. You look at a uh, Joker and the and the Nuggets. You know Nikola Jokic. I think it took him about two seasons, two two three seasons to for him and the Nuggets to get to the playoffs. It took seven seasons for him to reach the NBA Finals. So the Spurs with Wimby, you know, perhaps could project that way if they do the right moves starting this off season. Look, they're going to get a high uh, pick right now. As of this uh, recording, they're in the running for the number one overall pick. They have a 14% chance. So, so that's the one yeah. that blows me away. Yeah. I never would have thought that they would have been in the running for the number one again. That, 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 yeah. When I hear that, when I say, wow. I would have, told, I would have yeah. told you last November, no, no, they're not going to yeah. be. <laughs> but, are. But, that, but that's my thing. So, you know, I, I know they say it's not a very deep draft, but I, I think it's a very doable draft depending yeah. on which team wins it. Yeah, and um, so if the Spurs win it, well, okay, well, okay, maybe they won't bring in a power player like Wimby, but they could bring in a, a very valuable piece to the rebuild. But but then that's a, that's a, that's the a luxury of it too, Vinny. They can. What if they get? What if they win it all again? I I wouldn't be mad if they dangled the number one pick uh, for a trade, 
and say, oh, okay, oh. X team, you know, give us uh, your multi all-star player. We'll give you our number one pick. And by the way, we got other draft picks we can use as well. Or even they trade down and acquire more picks. I, I, I think, I think that's, that's something they, they should really consider, especially in this draft. Should totally consider, should totally yeah. consider. And I also worry about the poor people in Detroit. They're going to start burning down buildings if they lose oh the pick the Spurs again. <laughs> oh, my God. Yes, absolutely. All right. Uh, well, there you have it, our little quick uh, back and forth regarding where expectations set too high and so much more as the Spurs continue their rebuild. When we get back, uh, we're going to be talking about you guys, the Locked On Spurs fans. And what are y'all talking about? Surprise. Surprise. Uh, Vinny, a lot about Wimby. So, yeah. You know, yeah, surprise. All right, we'll do that when we get back with Vinny Vincetta. Make sure to follow him on X at V Vincetta. Hey, I want to talk to you about Fire TV. I have it. As a matter of fact, I have it like I'm almost on every single TV I have in my place. And it's so easy to use, so quick to install. And it's always my go to whenever I need to get those great streaming apps. Fire TV has been there for me. And we'll be there for you. Fire TV is your destination for sports from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies, TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have Fire TV. Fire TV recently has created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands, all for free, all for free. Yes, you heard that right. That includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels let you dive into all of the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date on all the latest on the world of sports, March Madness, NBA, MLB, and lots more. Look, not to mention the great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cookie videos as well. Check out the Fire TV channels right now on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should like right now. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit www.amazon.com slash locked on Fire TV. Let's talk about Nissan. If you're the kind of driver that likes to push things a little further, ever wonder what an adventure could be like around the next corner? Our friends at Nissan have a lineup of SUVs with the capabilities of taking your adventure to the next level. So what do they got? Well, they got the 2024 Nissan Armada. That will change what you expect from a full-size SUV. Picture a rugged 4x4 that can seat up to 8 in first-class luxury and style. Tow bigger and explore further with the 2024 Armada. Hey, what about the Pathfinder? Yeah, the 2024 Nissan Pathfinder has room up to eight and expansive cargo capacity, advanced capable 4x4 capability, and with 284 horsepower and up to 6,000 pounds of towing, when adventure calls, the Pathfinder is there to answer. Look, what more do you need? They have, they, Nissan has it all. Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Am uh, Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. And we're back right here on Locked On Spurs with Vinny Vincetta, the Vin Dog. Follow me on X at V Vincetta. Vinny, it's time to hear what Locked On Spurs fans are talking about. I have to sift through a lot of them because there's still a lot of frustration with some of these fans. I mean, <laughs> even at the bitter end of the season. They're still steaming. So, unfortunately, everybody, we can't get to everyone's comment. We'll just pick two and take it from there. This is a very interesting comment. So, uh, first of all, it's from Mandito. He says, I think they, Spurs, would have a slightly better record if they didn't do an experiment. Now, he's referring to the Jeremy Sohan at point guard experiment, uh, perhaps letting Wimby roam around, letting him figure it out experiment. You know, whatnot. I mean, they, met, they messed with the experiment of Malachi Branham at point guard. The point guard was kind of a big experimental point until they finally said, okay, Trey Jones, you're it. Mm -hmm. But what do you think about that? If, you know, by the way, it's a great uh, observation there, Mandito. If the Spurs did not do too much experimenting, could they have really been a better team record wise? If you think about it, you just keep Trey Jones out there and what he does, what he does best, and Sohan does what he does best. And Wimby, yeah, you don't want to be a, a five, right? But guess what? You're going to be a five. Welcome to the NBA. What do you think about that uh, whole idea? 
I agree with him. I think they would have won more, but I'm not going to go off the deep end and say that much more. Okay. But I'm comfortable saying they'd have more wins than they do as of the recording yeah. of this podcast. I think he's right. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm right there with you. I think even if they wanted to experiment with Sohan at a point guard, fine. But if it didn't work after the first two, three losses, that's a sign. And they and remember, remember early in the season, too many, uh, whether it be at Cairns or in the national sports media, they would compare Sohan and, and Trey Jones's numbers as point guard and point guards and the impact of Wemby and how Trey Jones just, you know, made him a better Wemby a player and Sohan was hating life. Even then, the Spurs didn't pull the plug on that experiment and they went to the bitter rent. So, uh, yeah, I think they definitely would have won a lot more. Uh, well, not a lot more, but a few more if they just stuck to uh, who does best uh, player position rise. All right. Next comment is from Jose Rivera. He says, I don't understand. Now, he's, does he understand the topic of yesterday's Locked On Spurs, which is about a fire sale, just blowing it all up? Uh, we blew it up to get Wemby. <laughs> then to blow up the blow up, uh, was the team supposed to vault to 50 wins magically after the draft? You know about Wimby. Uh, jo- oh, look at this. Jordan and Jokic took seven, eight years to win a title. Wimby supposed to win in year one. So he's just reacted to yesterday's Locked On Spurs about the concept of blowing it up. Where do you stand on that? It obviously didn't work this season. Minimal wins. Team's not working. What is wrong with having that concept of just blowing it up and starting from scratch? I don't think there's anything wrong with it. And and I would expect that the roster is going to flip more than people think, more than we think. So, again, uh, Brian Wright blew up a lot and gave up a lot to make this Wimby thing happen. And they had to get lucky on draft night, which they did, Mm -hmm. or lottery night, which they did. Um, But it feels like more house flipping with this Spurs roster is going to go down. I mean, I, I just don't see how you can't, I mean, there are some pieces to work with. Yes. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to name names, but Spurs Mm -hmm. fans without having to say it, know those names, there's going to be some guys I would assume that will not, will not be here next season. Yeah. 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 And and there's a point where you have to just stop rebuilding the re does that make sense? Like you have to go, you have to, Okay, it, 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 when when does rebuilding start and end? Because they're in it right now. But yes, there is that concept of you know you blow it up, you're starting all over again, mesh and you no know, new teammates for Wimby to mesh with. You know people getting used to him and vice versa. So we saw this year. But look, I mean the Spurs are in a great position to put a better team around Wimby and whoever else they want to keep. I'm assuming I'll be about to sell. Uh, you know, maybe Sohan. But the one thing is for sure, when uh, Vinny, this team just didn't work this year. Something's got to give. And you're right. I think some maybe fan favorites could be finding them, uh, cheering for them in a different uniform <laughs> next year. Do you do you expect this Spurs team, Brian Wright, to make blockbuster moves this offseason? Feels like maybe the answer should be yes, because yeah. he sacrificed. I mean, he put the place up for sale to get lucky to land on Wimby. So what do you do now? What's that next step? In my opinion, is you, yeah. you've got to make the moves to go again to your term, the war chest. You've got stuff in there. You've got cash. You've got ability. You've got capital. Now's the time, I think, to, to make moves. Um, to get some people around here because I don't, do you really need another season to say, let's see what we got? No, you don't. No, you don't. You, you, you're finishing that season up now. So realize what's not worked. And we can assume they already know that because they're yeah. really good at what they do. Uh, they've been better at, at player evaluations and, and, and development really better than any other team in the league in the last 20 plus years. So they know what they're doing. So it feels like the, the right thing to do is to go get those pieces you need to start moving mm-hmm. this thing even more forward. Absolutely. All right, everybody. Thank you all for leaving some comments here at the Locked On Spurs YouTube page. We appreciate it. I wish we could read every single one of them. Some of them I have to, would have to bleep because Ken's might have an issue with it. <laughs> so if I read them up for, uh, word for word, but I could definitely sense and feel your frustration. Yes, it was a bad season. Yeah, look, it's almost over. The Spurs got a few more games left. 
I don't know about you, Vinny, but now I'm kind of just watching the lottery odds now. Like, okay, Spurs, you know, keep that in mind as you wind down the season. Look, I know it's not a it's not a Wimby draft or a Zion draft or a LeBron draft, but you could do some some good good business with a very very high draft pick. And by the way, Vinny, I'm at the point now. I'm not expecting that Toronto pick to convey this draft, right? Are you are you with me there? I totally am with you there, and really yeah. the. The first thing I do every night when I check standings is, is to see how Washington did, how Detroit did, and how yeah. Charlotte did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm there with, I'm right there with you. I'm like, did, did they win or they did? They, okay, did they won? Good, 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 good. <laughs> Keep winning, Detroit. Go Pistons, go. Um, and uh, yeah, so uh, look, offseason should prove to be a very fun time. I'm hoping it's going to be a very active time. We got the lottery game. The last Spurs game of the year is Detroit. Yeah. Not- you know, people mark that down. Yeah. That's like the lottery bowl, you know, like, like everybody's going to be coming out of the, the frost center. Happy. We lost. Woo-hoo! <laughs> we lost. Detroit won. Yeah. Dude, number one pick. Here we come again. He uh, is Vinny Vincetta with Ken's five. He's with a sports team there. Make sure to follow him on X at B Vincetta. Uh, Vinny, I know, uh, you know, there's, there's still a lot more San Antonio sport, local sports. You got San Antonio covered. What are you working on in your front? Oh, we got the uh, season opener for the San Antonio Brahmas this weekend on Easter Sunday. And I'm working on a story that I think just may air uh, this week. It'll be on my uh, uh, Twitter page and also on our website and our Facebook page. We've had so many minor league professional football teams in San Antonio over the years that have worked for a season or two and then folded up their tents. So I've kind of posed the question, uh, why is it going to work this time? We've been through this so so many times and so we got that mm-hmm. and we'll, we'll wait on the spurs season to wrap up and we know wimby's going to win rookie of the year and all yeah. that kind of stuff and and uh once the once the men's final four uh wraps up in phoenix they're going to hand that yeah. off to the san antonio committee the final four is in the alamo city in 2025 so we'll start that's our awesome. year-long preparations to get the final four back in san antonio that's awesome i like how san antonio has become a destination for final fours i mean yeah. san supposed to a handful already so it's awesome uh putting that animal dome to good use by the way vinny i i heard a rumor is it true that you you're actually the one who invented electricity is that true like you had the concept and created it a little bit you know i was i was in on the media okay. i was in on okay the okay okay i just want to make sure because you are a man of many talents and i would not put it past me you if we come to i read my encyclopedia i don't know if kids still do that nowadays but back in the day kids we had encyclopedias books yes, knowledge um, I offered my two cents, and 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 the great mind said, you know, what? let's listen to the Vin dog on this one. Yeah, exactly. That's why you got to follow Vinny on uh, X at V Vincetta. Make sure you do that right now. Hey, we're done talking. We want to hear from you. What are you uh, talking about right now? We want to know. We told you how you can get a hold of Vinny. You can see it on your screen. You can see it on my screen right now as well. You can also follow Locked On Spurs YouTube page. Leave a comment. We'll read it. Hopefully, the next episode. And make sure to follow us on the Ken's Five app Plus app. Uh, what else we got? Uh, obviously, YouTube, iTunes, Spotify. The list goes on and on. We'll be back tomorrow. I think Dr. Ryan McCorkle. Yes, he's going to make another appearance. It's been a while since he's been on. But he's going to catch us up on all the latest injury front from your silver and black. Uh, what does it mean? You know, he's probably talking about the recent Zach Collins concussion. Just about just expanding your knowledge of sports medicine. And that's what Doctor is going to be doing tomorrow with us here on Lockdown Spurs. So for Vinny Vincetta. Oh, by the way, Vinny, I think I'll be in studio this weekend with Casey. So You were a few weeks ago. That was nice. I went for, yeah, I think like I'm going to be rejoining him. We're going to be discussing all things Spurs this weekend. So stay tuned for that, everybody. Hopefully one day me, the Vin Dog, and Casey can get together and do a little bite like that we did last time. But again, we thank you for making the Lockdown Spurs your first listen. So for Vinny Vincetta, I am Jeff Garcia. We're going to put a lock in this episode of Lockdown Spurs.